In uh, this video, I'll be talking about working with attributes. More specifically, I'll talk about how to create a new attribute, how to delete an attribute, and how to assign a value to a attribute based on the other attribute or any other expression you can use. So, first of all, there are two main environments for working of attributes. You can use it in do it in the field tab of the layer properties or you can do it in the attribute table of the layer. Which are those tools you use? Well you have almost the same tools available. Uh, some more tools in the attribute layer and there are some tools that you only see in the other one. Are more, if you think of the field tab as being a more database backend um, tool. And basically, I would say that if you have a small data set, small, let's say less than a thousand objects, 10,000 objects perhaps, you can, um, you can easily manipulate them in the attribute table. That would probably be the easiest. If you have large data sets, such as all the addresses in Copenhagen and Flexpert, which is about half a million, then it's much, 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 and even more quicker to do it using the field tab in the, in the properties. Basically because when you use the attribute table, each time you create a change, the whole table updates. So if you've got lots of objects that are updating all the time, and it takes really long time. So if you're working with small data sets, it's fine to do it in the attribute table and probably the easiest. If you have large data sets, then you should probably consider working in the fields tab. If we look at how we do it in the attribute table, this is really a cluttered environment where there's lots and lots and lots and lots and even more commands to, to work with. But then we can, we can talk about them. So I'll just go over in QGIS and I will return to this data set and I will clear my selection and bring up the attribute table. So here we have the attribute table. There's not many attributes available. Um, but you can see up here it says that these ad access ad there are uh, 86,144 addresses here so it will probably take some time if you start doing updates here um, there are none of them that are filtered this filtered is a wee bit special because there are, uh, you can also do a filter only on your attribute table without filtering the spatial data. Um, and that's what this filtering talks about, is that none of these have been filtered specifically and there's none of them that are selected. So that's how we get to the tool. We have its name, we have how many objects that are selected and we have how many objects there are. Then we have the selection set so we can do the selection by expression and we can clear the selection just like we did in um, the standard QGIS window so just like if we use this button up here we have the same button here and we can say give me all my for expert addresses so I just say for equal uh, one, four, seven. So now they selected and you can see they are also selected in the graphic part. I can uh, clear the selection. Um, I can um, go back. I can do a, if I have something that I selected in my data set, um, let's say I have uh, selected 
all of those that had a hot bit oops of uh, one and these are as you can now see distributed down throughout my attribute table I can gather them together at the top by using this function here which will bring all of my selected objects to the top of my table I can invert the selection so if we look in QGIS we can see that all our ones are selected but I can say okay this one of it that will invert the selection so it's all the other ones that are selected and the ones that are unselected so if I right here so we can see it and I'll flip the selection now you can see all the other ones are selected this is typically useful if you have some objects that you have let's say that you're working with um, some municipalities and some of them are part of the rural outskirts and you have updated those and then you want to update the rest of them as non rural outskirts and then you just flip the selection and then get the other part of it so the invert selection is a very useful tool then you can zoom to the selected ones and pan and all those other things that we can down here <coughs> it's at the moment it says show all features we can ask it to show only selected ones and you can see it has there are now only selected features available in my attribute table they are still out here in the graphical one I can um, show features visible on the map so it will only show me those that are visible now so I can uh, do some filtering uh, on this one which is let's say a quick filter and this is where this filter function comes in up here so if I said at the moment I have you see I've got these 86,144 but if I say that I only want the ones that I for expert I can just do like this and apply and you can see it created the select thing from before and you can now see that 9,025 have been filtered okay. so this was my number of addresses in the Copenhagen and Frederiksberg municipality this is the number of not number ones and these is the ones that are in Frederiksberg based on this filter down here so I can do a short filtering based on this column filter down here I can do an advanced one which basically just brings my expression build up and I can do an expression builder to create my filter um, and I can clear my like that so now it's cleared and I'll clear my selection set so nothing is selected so that was all those fun things that we can do in our attribute table so we could filter inside it with using this little quick one we could show them all clear all those other things in addition to these selections and filters we have the abilities to create attributes and this one here and delete them at the moment I can only delete and that's because in this is a shape file and the rules in shape files is that you can only create if you have your uh, layer in edit mode so I'll have to bring it up in edit mode by clicking this to edit and then that will give me the ability to create my new attribute it gives me also some extra filter things but leave that and so I can create a new one I can give it a name Test, I give it a comment, 
test attribute. I have to decide which type of data it is. I in in a um, a shape file I have whole numbers, decimal numbers, or int integers and reals, texts and dates. So I'll create the text and I'll make it. I have to specify how large it is, 10 characters. And you can see this is why it's a wee bit annoying to do things like this in the attribute table because this does take some time. So I'll be back when it's finished calculating. So it didn't take so long, but it took some time to create it. And I can delete it again and it'll take just as long time. And then I can use my calculator to assign values to it. But I'll do that using the other way of doing it, namely not, namely not doing it here, but doing it in the attribute, uh, the field tab of the properties. So I'll just stop my edits and I will discard my changes. And it will just update all these attributes again. So you see, we really have to be patient to do this type of operations when you have your attribute table open. So, <clears throat> if we uh, do it that way using our R tool, namely going into the properties and then going into the field tab, we get a somewhat similar but less cluttered interface. So let's do that. We can go in and say properties and fields. And here <coughs> we can't delete before editing. We could do that in the attribute differences. So I'll <coughs> toggle my editor and I can now say add a new field. I'll call the test again. I'll test one this time. And I'll create it as a decimal value. If I use decimal values, I have to give it a width. So that's a number of ciphers. So I'll give it, let's say, seven. And I want to be able to have how many digits after the comma. So how many decimal values. And I'll say that I want three decimal values. So if I have specify a real number, a decimal value, I have to give it these two parameters. You see, created immediately. If I um, add a test of integer, test, let's call it test i, and that would be a whole number integer, I just have to give how many digits there is in it. It can take up to 10, and see if I say 11, nothing happens. I can say 10 as a maximum. That's not quite true because if I look here in my slides, I have written down some of these numbers. And a integer has to be less than uh, whatever this number is. So it can be in this range. So 2,147 million to 2,147 million. So minus 240,000. And it's quite correct that there are 10 digits here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But it can't, I can't write 9999999. That's outside the range. So, so it's a wee bit misleading that we can have values up to 10. They have to be in this range. Same goes to decimal values. They have to be in this range, never mind how many um, significant values we include. Text strings can be up to 100 characters in a shape file, and we can have dates, and if we're using what's called a special light database, we can have a date time. Which types we have and how long they are depends on what type of data we are saving our data in. So there can be different from if it's from our Postgres database, if it's from a shapefile or anything else. So be a bit 
if you're going to have very big numbers or very precise number you have to check what that exact data type can hold um, but typically that's not an issue so I'll just create my whole number with 10 and like that and if I want to get rid of them I can just press the delete button and I can press the delete button now I'll leave that one um, the other tool I've got here in here is the calculator tool and the important thing here is to note that when I do a calculation I can create I can create a new attribute here a new field so I don't have to first create it and then do the calculation I can do the so I could create my test real it's going to be a real number and I can then say that it has to be my uh, municipality code divided by my uh, oops, road code okay. like this so this would um, and it will show you an example of what it what the results would be so now I'm creating a new attribute and at the same time calculating a value I'll just keep that one for later and say OK and it will then do the calculation on all those attributes <coughs> I can also create another thing in here which is I can create a virtual field. If, the, if, if I leave this unchecked I'm creating a field that is stored in my data file. If I leave this one checked I'll be storing a virtual field. Virtual field is a calculated field so if it, it reflects the underlying data and if the underlying data changes the virtual field will also change. And it's also not stored as part of the data but it's stored in the QGIS project file. So, and if you don't save the project file, it disappears. And so it's only a in-memory thing that is based on existing data and it calculates from them. So I could do exactly the same, call it something wrong, and call the decimal value, give it some significant values here, and paste it in. So now I'm creating the same as I did before but I'm creating it as a virtual field so it's not in the, the database itself but it is stored in the project and if I later change some of the attributes so I change the road code or the municipality code this one will reflect those changes because it's not really a data file it's a calculation that is stored in my data so, and you can also see it here in my layout here. You can see that I've got it here as a with the little sigma on it, indicating that it's a virtual table. And I can at any point go in and I can then change it. So I can put a new calculation as the basis of that attribute. So they are relatively flexible to use these virtual fields. Um, a bit slower but uh, I and I think that now most of QGIS operations will operate on um, on these and finally of course I can also update an existing story if I had created a field already I can say update and then choose which fields update and then do a update calculation so those are the functions I have in here and I can again as I mentioned before go into this function and I can define in this uh, Python programming language I can create my own little function that if I need something that was not there already so I'll just say ok and if I now open my attribute table you'll see I have my newly created two attributes over here they are not 
they there are you can see the, the differences in how they are rounded, but the calculation behind the two was the same. So that's um, how the create attributes work if we are inside the properties. So we go properties and then go fields. And if I now say, okay, I regret, so I'll just delete these that I've made. I'm not deleting too much here. Delete and delete. Oops. Uh, delete and then say, well, I can discard. Let's save my data. So, my calculator I use for updating. I could use it to create a new attribute. I could create a virtual one, that one that is only exists in memory and reflects all attributes as they change, but it's not stored in the data, but stored in the project. I can update, so I choose this one up here, and then choose which attribute I want to update. We have those most common operators that I use. I could go in in the function part here, write my own Python code. This window here will contain my calculation. Here I have all my operators and my attribute there. And just like in the other tools, if I have an attribute selected, I can press my give me all unique attribute values. So all of these tools do function via similar.